somewhere in the middle of nowhere two of america's most dangerous criminals are headed for the border earlier today during a daylight liquor store robbery in big springs the gecko brothers killed another texas ranger that changes the death toll to 16. one night is all that stands between them and freedom now this is my kind of place but it's going to be one hell of a night Rodriguez from Quentin Tarantino from dusk till dawn Which way to the set? Through the door, down the hall. Can I see your hall pass, please? Here you go. Thank you. No, Do, no. We what? Don't you don't door. need my. Okay, fine. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right this way, Mr. Kennedy. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Move it. Copy that, Doug. Looking. Feeling strong? I'm ready to go, man. Yeah. To yeah. set, to set. Okay, got gotcha. you. set. Cool. Okay. Hey, hey, hey! Ho, 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 ho! Let's go! Guys, I need a 20 on Quentin and George, please, right away. I need a 20 on Quentin and George, guys. Anyone got a 20 on Clooney or Tarantino? Rubber baby buggy bumper. La, 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 la. Ma, ma. Ma, ma, one. Mo, mo, two. Scooter, let's go. Get on it now. Still looking. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Here we go, here we go. Yeah, great. Next one. Right, chow. Shit, man. I gotta work on this. Tino, I'm the biggest fan. I, I quit school because yeah, you. Get the I fuck out of here with this shit. Oh, piece of fuck. shit. Fuck, man. God damn it. You know, this yeah, fucking geeks just come by and all the fucking out, yeah. Is that my fault? No. All right, did I ask hey, you to Hey, I am school? a director. Yeah, how's it going, pal? Suck one. Bags. Shit, I don't need guys like that around. Huh? Last time I make a movie in San Francisco. Yeah, every time I see that. Get over the old. Tarantino, Mr. Clooney, can I have your autograph? Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely, Doug. <laughs> Absolutely. What's your name? Scooter, let's go. Get on it now. Copy that, Doug. Still looking. And uh, what's your name again? Houston. Give me an H. Okay. Do you have my D? How is it? I'm 18. Yeah, well, it's old enough. Thank you, Houston. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Oh, Jesus. All right. Rock party. There we go. Guys, somebody had better be walking with them. There's fucking lights in here. Fuck is this? Big-ass joint. I have these right. This is like a fucking fortress. We're getting yeah, we're there. getting close now. Cool, 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 cool. Here we go. There it is. There we go. Run and roll! <laughs> Slick up. No, it's left here. Okay.
What did I tell you? What did I say to you? I said, buy the roadmap and leave. What the fuck am I supposed to do, Seth? He recognized us. He didn't recognize shit. Seth, I'm telling you, the way he looked at us, you especially, I knew he knew. Low profile. You understand the meaning of the words low profile? Hey, Richie, how's your hand? It hurts like a fucking son of a bitch, Let me tell you what low Thanks profile is asking. not. And here to tell us all about it is the director of the film, and one of the stars of the film. Let's have a big fango welcome for Robert Rodriguez, the director of Desperado, and Quentin Tarantino, one of the stars of uh, Desperado. <laughs> They're also collaborating this summer on a new horror film from Dusk Till Dawn, with effects created by Greg Nicotero and Robert Kurtzman of KNB. Well, it's good to be here. Um, horror fans, ourselves, um, Greg and Bob, demented minds, um, from the sick and deviant mind of Quentin Tarantino, will be coming from dusk till dawn, horror film that we're going to be making sometime later in the summer. Mixing that with the uh, special effects and sick, deviant minds of Greg and Bob, we should have a pretty sick and deviant picture. Part of the advantage of the picture we're doing is that there's no horror for the first half of the movie. So that you can really invest yourself with the characters and feel part of the movie before anything happens to them that you don't want to happen to them. So that you really, you know, feel the horror a little bit more. A lot of horror films start delivering the horror too soon and you don't really have any eyes into the picture. What this is enabling us to do is, is uh, really get you to be a part of the picture before the horror element comes in which is always the best mm -hmm. thing about most horror novels, mm -hmm. is that there's yeah, a lot of time spent sure. with, uh, with the characters before the horror comes in, and then, and then you care about them a lot more, and then you're really part of the, uh, part of the movie. I mean, n not to compare ourselves in any way, shape, or form, but, I mean, uh, one of the things that actually makes Stephen King's novels so, like, scary when you read them is, he, you know, he, he's never given credit for, like, he, he's a, uh, uh, for, like, he's one of the best writers of characterization that there is. I mean, you know, he writes these incredibly believ believable people who you really kind of embrace as yourself and take into your heart, and then, after you've totally assimilated with these people, then he literally puts them through hell, and you know, because he's Stephen King, you know, the, you know the kind of stuff he's doing, he's not afraid to take them anywhere. So now it, it's really painful. Right. All right, because you truly do care about these people. They're not stick figures, all right? now. Our characters are actually a bunch of jerks, right? <laughs> but they're fun jerks. Yeah, but they're fun jerks. Yeah, they're fun jerks. All right, but but uh, but what's funny though is is the fact that uh, um, uh, you know it's about an hour into the movie, all of a sudden, boosh, all these vampires show up in our film, and you know the audience has there's been no indication that that will happen at any point in the movie until they just in a blink of an eye show up, and then now they gotta deal with it, all right? And so the audience is like completely caught unaware, is like, what the hell is going on? Well, that's exactly what the characters are feeling. They weren't expecting to bump into vampires either. Right? <laughs> so all of a sudden, they're just dealing with it. You know you know what works, like in, like in this, let's say a Stephen King novel, for instance, is that you're enjoying the characters and the story so much, you don't even want the horror, you don't even need the horror element to yeah. come in. And when it comes in, it almost gets in the way, because it starts messing with all the characters and screwing them up. Oh, so with this yeah. movie, it's the same way. When, in the script, when you read Quentin's script, you can you can just follow the movie through and never have to bring in the horror. And it would be an exciting enough, engaging movie because you like the characters and you like the situation. To add that into the mix is what really starts churning the pot, so it's, it's fun. Let's go, guys. Clear, guys. If you don't need to be in here, step out, folks. Step out, please. It's too noisy. It's too hot. Step out. Step out if you're not working in this, guys. It all boils down to it, you know? Whatever his vision is, I, I try and facilitate. I try and get it in front of the camera, on time, on schedule, keep it on schedule, and give him what he wants. All right, here we go, gang, here we go. And roll sound. Set. Yeah, we're going. Got here. Right. 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 Because we couldn't get back far enough. So do you want to go back? I might, overlap it, I might overlap it later when we do uh, Sex Machine on the Pool Table. Looking back this way, so that'd be a Wednesday situation. Then. Yeah. All right. So, go. bed's going back in its normal position. Camera comes out. We are lighting, guys. We are lighting mode for the two shot and singles on the bed, guys. Gloria and Richard on the bed. So, good night's camera. Good night effects. Good night sound. Fly call sheets. My first job in this business 
I was a tour guide at Universal Studios. So. Yes. Straight from Walnut Creek. I didn't know anybody in the business. I couldn't figure out how to get on a studio lot to get the resume that I didn't have under somebody's door. Yeah. So a friend of mine suggested, actually my mother suggested that I be a tour guide at Universal. <laughs> because then on my days off, I could walk around the back lot and pass out resumes. Wow. So I took my mother's advice. That's and awesome. this is where I am. Why do I love being an AD? Can't think of any reason why I love being an AD. Why are you one? Ah, you know, my wife got me into this business, and uh, it's too late to get out, basically. <laughs> you know, but I mean, it's 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 better to sit behind a desk, you know, 40 hours a week. Yeah. You know, you, you, you know, it's a challenge. You're always working. You're always doing something, you're pushing your limits all the time. It's a lot of stress, but you know, by the time you get home, you know, if you can handle being an AD, you know, it's a great job. But you know, you got to realize that when you go up, when you start, you know, become an AD. You know, you're pretty much dedicated to being an AD, you know. Yeah. You don't want to go off and do something else, you yeah. know, but, you know, start on non-union shows, you know, work your way up. Once you get on, you know, the DGA, you know, you can make some good money and you can be working on big shows and, you know, you can get residuals and be working with a lot of great people, you know. Is that your goal? Yeah. It's my goal. My goal in this industry is to make a lot of money. Yeah. Yep. And how important is the creative product? For me, the creative process is not important to me. You know, if I was producing, I could see it, you know, be an important part of, you know, or an aspect of my job. But, you know, as an AD, it's not really that important to me. Because an AD, basically, your job is just to get the job done. Right. Talk to the director, find out what he wants in a shot, you know, and if that's what he likes. You can always, you know, give your input, you know, and tell him exactly what you think, you know, how the shot should be. But most likely, you know, 80% of the time, the director's gonna say, well, this is what I want. And it's, get it done you know your job is to keep things moving along as, as the day progresses nothing should slow down because of the you know production department right. just keep moving at a constant pace so Brian step on set please Brian so cameras coming out beds going back into position lighting mode is occurring lighting thank you everybody occurring. great first day thank you, thank you. Yeah. see y'all tomorrow yeah. hello George Clooney's office there he is. I just got back from Russia. Hell, I. Oh, what do you need? What do you do? I just went to fetch a coffee cup in Russia. Hell, I've got to make Quentin his coffee. I. I work for Quentin. Vicky Lukai. Can you open this door, please? Open sure. this door. Just open it. A typical day for me as George's assistant. Well, um, wake him up with a little hand release. Hello. That did it. You're fucking fired. Pack uh, your shit and get out. Security? I hit rush hour. <laughs> Shut up. I can't believe now, what this. What is all this stuff you're carrying? Oh, oh my God. We have to have our coffee specially made. Uh-huh. It's right here. I, I got it. Two it. hours to get it from your house. Yeah, it's not even... <sighs> this is his little... He has to have it on every set. His wacky way set. I make phone calls for George. I go to the dry cleaners, go to the market. He has to have his water, because he's really healthy. So, Vicki, what is your job in the basically? <sighs> Hang out with him on the set, find out who he doesn't want to talk to. Oh my god, I gotta make that phone call. I'm sorry. Get back on the phone with those people and tell them how busy George is, even when he's out playing basketball. I gotta call, okay. I... I'll do it in a sec. Do you want me to wait until the coffee's done? Pay the maid and feed the pig. If you want to follow me, you're more than welcome to do so. But it entails... I hate going to Taco Bell for him. Ugh, I hate that. There's always a huge line. When you put the word personal in front of assistant, you basically give up your life for him. Is this BMW you're driving? Uh part of the package being George Clooney's assistant? Well, you know, George makes a lot of money. And I get all the perks. Can we just talk to you for one second? I know you have to go. Really, what does your job entail? I'm basically running his life. Are you getting Juliet? What is George getting her? We're getting Juliet a finger that goes like this. <laughs> Why is that? Because George flips off Juliet all the time. Juliet flips off George all the time. Because they like each other. Oh, my God! 
I can't believe they invented these middle fingers. It's just for you. <laughs> Open this one. This is just a little art for you. Oh no, I can't believe this. Uh, <laughs> it's beautiful. It's Tiffany. It's, it's fine. It's Waterford. What? It's Waterford. It's Waterford. I know. I yeah. can't believe you. He bought that at an auction. At uh, uh, which auction was that? At uh... smell the end of it. <laughs> it really was too, because I'm tired. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I will never flip you off again. You like beat me for five years. I so you don't right. close. Let's hold the work. There Let's we hold go. The talk in here. George Clooney, the everybody. Team, hold the talk. Hold the talk. start the roll earlier than I did? Yeah, just watch the gun. You'll know when to start the roll. Okay. Just be aggressive. Okay. No, you're right. Do you want to go upside down so then I can spray some water in here? Upside down, wood, bones. I mean, I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> and then yeah. I'm trying to focus because this mm -hmm. is like the first time ever aiming a gun at mm -hmm. someone's head. Yeah, first I was getting, head. well, you did it in reverse. First you did the aiming, which yeah. I got. But then before that, I got, uh, I mean, then after that, I had you do what should come before that, which is you just yeah, once again, you responding to him telling you to kill him, which is more like kind of sad. I was going to say I can't. Did you say you can't? No. You can say it. We can do it again. Okay. You want to do it again? Yeah, while well, I'm coming in like that. So in action, I'm going to start coming in. He's saying it, as I get a little bit close, you say, I can't. Okay. And then as I'm pulling back, aim. And then fire. Okay. okay. So you just come in once, I say, mm -hmm. I can't, pull back, shoot away, okay. I'm okay. pulling back, squint. I can't. I can't. My whole thing about acting is that you're just lying. It's plain and simple. I'm not going to try to really feel like death is near and really put myself in that head frame for hours on end. I mean, I don't understand that. I just understand that acting is lying. And you can lie a million different ways. And, and but you are faking it. That's what, and, but, with that, you can step into just pretending and becoming and just being something. Action. Richie, would you do me a favor and eat my pussy for me? Let's see the please at the end of this game. Okay. Richie, would you do me a favor and eat my pussy for me, please? I'm hamming it up. Let me just uh, do one more. I'm just sweating. That fucking coffee is crazy. Okay. Can you please explain? Every week we do ice mochas. Uh huh. It happens to be Wednesdays of the day, but this is Friday because he was out of town. And there's only six. So who are they for? They're, I'm, I'm taking. There was ten, and I'm taking it to whoever grabs it, and then I go back and get more, and whoever grabs. I'm bringing one. Yeah. So the... See. Rick Stripling? Yep. All right. Key grip. Key grip. So how, how much does this knock out of your budget then? $100. $100 a week? Yep. Price mocha? Mm -hmm. Who's that guy? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Kenny. Okay. Thanks. See you guys later. What's absolutely amazing, and, and actually Crash knows the only person who actually said this, but apparently the front, there was actually, there was actually, believe this or not, there was actually, it's probably Rick who said it. There actually was a, a conversation with the front office where we were gonna get three kegs of beer, and then somebody in the grip department said, no, two kegs will be fine. A grip, a grip said, said two kegs will be fine. No, yeah, yeah, the producers are buying three kegs, 
and a wow. grip. Who? 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 I don't. Crash knows. Who was there? I'll find out. Wait, wait, I thought it was you. Oh God, no. I can't. Uh, I would say, yeah. No, it wasn't wait, me. Wait, no, wasn't wait, me. Wait, am I the type of guy who would say buy less beer? Well, Crash did. It was a person that you wouldn't expect it either. He wouldn't say who it was, but he witnessed it. All right. I had just heard about it. All right. Oh, and it was wow. like. And it was like I get there. And I, I get there about like 45 minutes after the party started, and we are like draining the last bit out of the Ooh. second keg. And be because of the fucking grip department, wow. we didn't have oh. beer. Oh, we should, we should time out on this and cut the camera. <laughs> no. Many people perceive Cribs to be very large, ill-educated, um, beer-drinking, sloppy Sleepy. people, when actually I think it's uh, a very demanding job because it involves so many different departments. You work with sound in terms of getting rid of boom shadows with flags, with camera in terms of all the camera movement and what the camera sees, with you know the electricians and the DP on all the lighting. It's actually a very demanding job, and there is no time to sit around and be lazy and fall asleep on the truck. And you know the guys are constantly working. Beautiful. We are building this facade um, right here in this right spot. We are going 30 feet that way and 30 feet on that way. And I think it's 20 main yes. inside. We are trying to get the permit from, what's the name of that institution? The LM. The, Zero land uh, okay. <laughs> and we are waiting for that in order to start our work. We don't yet have official permission to be on this property, but our our first lumber order has just shown up. You know, we've got about five tons of lumber on its way in here. That's our construction trailer, which will become our construction office. That scenery we built in Los Angeles that we've brought out here. This is all our support facilities. The toilets are on their way, and the electricity is on its way. And we're uh, we're full tilt boogie here, but we don't have a permit yet. In typical fashion, the movie industry, everything, we're always on a deadline, and we make a schedule, we hold to it. The government's not quite as accurate, you know. We are taking our stakes out of the ground because we're supposed not to be here, and I'm, I'm going to find out what's going on. <laughs> maybe the whole crew is, we have to go back, or maybe we should have a beer right down at the restaurant <laughs> and wait. <laughs> On this film, it's been very interesting because it's Robert's first effects movie. So he doesn't really know sort of what he was getting himself into. In the early pre-production stages, we were storyboarding and doing designs, and he's like, yeah, that'll be cool, we'll do that, and we'll do this, and we'll do that, and we'll do this. And he got real, real excited about it. Mm -hmm. And we were just building everything based on the designs and the storyboards, and then suddenly we got on set, and he was like, wow, did I, did I want that? Th there was one creature we have that its stomach rips open and it bites people's heads. And we got on set, Quentin wouldn't even come on set to look at it, he was too mm -hmm. gross. And he went, oh, no, it's horrible, I don't wanna look at that. And everyone went, oh, it's sick. Like, where did that come from? We're like, yeah. Robert designed Robert, that. Yeah, he Robert. gave us a little sketch, and right. then, you know. So what we have here is, Gino, you want to hold that up there? Squinch down a tiny bit. The, the, the gag is, is that we see this sort of hideous creature, and as it is walking, it sort of straightens out. And this is going to rip, revealing hideous shark mouth. And then, of course, when Henrik walks and kind of does his sort of monster undulation, the mouth looks like it's opening and closing as it's walking. Thank you. Okay, your finger's pressing it too much. Keep your finger closer to your mouth. And action. There you go. And cut. Okay, we're cut. Here we go. We're cut. All right, here we go, gang. Here we go. One moment. Running by. Here, Norman. Just running right by here. Just go over that. Just go right there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
change. All right, here we go. Camera's going up. You like this? Oh yeah. Do you? Robert, here we I go. Yep. Ah! 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 Ready? That's, can we do one more? All right, check it here. Check it here. Check it here. I just want to try a little bit something different. <laughs> started as uh, Diane Carroll's boyfriend in the Julia show and moved on to MASH, Spear Chucker, moved on to Junie Moon and formed my own company and the rest is, is theatrical history. And your, in your own company was... Um, is. Is. Po Boy Productions. Po Boy? Po. Po. P-O apostrophe B-O-Y Productions. <laughs> and uh, what was your goal in the beginning for, what was your reason for forming it? Well, I had three set of rules that I had established in my mind that I wanted Hollywood to adhere to, but they would not do it. We, that one was to win the fight, never die, and always get the woman at the end of the movie. <laughs> and I feel that the only way I could do that was make my own movies. film was No Way Back. No Way Back I made for $75,000. I put it under my arm and I went to the Cannes Film Festival and I put a lot of little girls in tight t-shirts long before it was popular and I had them going around selling my picture and I put my office on the Carlton Terrace at Cannes Film Festival and I sold the hell out of No Way Back. <laughs> Because I believe in the bottom line. I believe I can, I can put the same kind of talent in a million five picture that the majors put in a 10 or 20 million dollar picture. The last picture I made was South Beach. I made it in Miami with Henry Fonda, uh, Gary Busey, and Vanity, and myself, and Robert Forrester, and Isabel Stanford. I made it for $800,000. And where did you make that? Miami, Florida. Miami. Called, it was called South Beach. So that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's top of the line talent. You know, I mean, these are names that people recognize. So I don't need to spend 20 million. To, I'm, I'm interested in the bottom line, especially if it's my company, because I'm interested in knowing how much money I'm going to make, not how much money I can spend. Right. Not finished, though. Look. See this? Oh, oh. Fat free. A lot of fat free food, okay? All the fat free cookies, and a lot of people love that because they're sugar holics, and they, right. and, but they need to be sure that it's fat free. If you just really want a sugar high, would you? Oh, the candy. Yeah, the candy. And there's all kinds of cookies. I mean, Petridge Farm, you can't beat it. Right. Yeah. And you got your standard uh, red vines. In red there. vines. And of course, traditional um, chips. How long have you been doing Petridge? A couple of years. Yeah. How did you get into it? Um, a friend of mine, who's one of the best craft service guys in the business, you know, basically pulled me along. Uh huh. I was in Pulp Fiction. Yes, I was. I did the coffee shop manager at the, uh, when they held up the restaurant. Hey, don't kill anybody. I'm not a hero. <laughs> First time I ever worked extra, but it's okay. It's a job. A legitimate job, you know. It's all work to me. It's all, it's all showbiz. <laughs> a wonderful world in showbiz. All I was before this is an old ex-marine and a dock worker, so I love this business. I love it. When I came into this business, Hey, I'm from the south side of Chicago. It opened a world to me I didn't even know existed of music and literature and art. I didn't even know that stuff was around, you know. Probably saved my life. <laughs> well, I might have ended up in uh, playing a game of rock hockey for the state, you know. Could have very easily done so. A lot of guys I grew up with did. Yeah, I love this business. A moment of silence for those pants. <laughs> I 
have a moment of Actually, silence. Actually, dear, I'm working, yeah. honestly. Uh, basically, we were told to provide bikers, truckers, and anyone that would uh, fit in this type of bar that's supposedly south of the border. You're not everyday, normal-looking type of principal background actor. We are a unique bunch that can play your character types, such as bikers, gangs, thugs, tattoo types, punk rock, hookers, homeless, lowriders, or whatever. And proud are the people, proud proud are the people your parents <laughs> warned you about. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go. Clear it up. Wow, extras come from all walks of life. I, I, there's really probably two types of extras if you want to look at it. You have your your extras that are your professionals, your um, you know career extras that do it every day, and this is what they do for a living. And then you'll have your extra that maybe just does it for fun, just to see what it's all about, and just to get out there maybe to become a star. I don't care if rain's freezes, because I got my plastic Jesus sitting on the dashboard of my car. I don't care if I cracked up holes and sailed out by such a gun sitting on the dashboard of my car. I think Robert Rodriguez is a god. Okay. Well, I know he's married. I happen to think his wife is a goddess. Who do you have a crush on, baby? No. Initials? GN. That's all I'm going to say. Would that be GN or KNB? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you after around here? What's that? Greg Nicotero. Greg Nicotero. He's just a little sexy, that's all. Who's that? <laughs> Who's Greg Nicotero? The, the guy with the long blonde hair. The guy that got his throat slashed on yeah. that thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Do you find Kenny attractive? Don't put me there, Sarah. <laughs> Don't take <laughs> me there. So Kenny, come here. Service, you notice Um I, I think I have, but I'm not quite sure. Ooh. So I'm not saying I'm not saying. No, 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 no. I'm not getting in the middle of that. I'm on camera. Hey, hey, John. Hey, 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 what? Who are you attracted to? Uh, who am I attracted to? Yeah. Who are you attracted to? Uh, other than Quentin. Has Amy hooked up with anyone on the set? The question is, who hasn't she hooked up with? Really? Okay. There might be going, you know, something with stick shift and Amy. That's, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Actually, that's not true. At that party the other night, he slipped me the tongue. Todd, he did. Get out. I didn't tell you that? No. He did. I had sex with a German. Whoa. His name is Franz. His name is Jens. Oh, Jens. I sleep with Noah Standin on ER. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding. I don't know. You should try the uh, actors here. There have been a little bit of uh, flirting around uh, George Clooney's trailer. Ooh. I'm not spreading rumors, but... Lots of set romances. Really? Oh, yeah. Um, well, no, lots of Bloomed. people... <laughs> let me explain it. Lots Believe of people me. trying. <laughs> lots of people trying. But uh, I don't... It doesn't actually... hurt that there's a titty bar <laughs> on set and the girls are walking around naked. Uh, George and a lot of the dancers, they seem to like him. 
<laughs> I love George. I can't talk about his sex life. Okay. Um, but he has one, though, doesn't he? A sex life? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Where's Quentin? Jesus Christ, get somebody out here who knows what they're talking about. I could fuck every girl on this set <laughs> if I wanted to. I don't. Oh, <laughs> <I'm> like, Quentin. <laughs> yeah. Put me told... in your move, movie, movie. Put it. Put me. <laughs> well, you remember when Bruce Willis said that on uh, yeah, yeah, the Pulp yeah. set? Yeah. Just so you know, Quentin, you could fuck any girl on this set. Now, maybe you already know that. That's okay. You're just playing it cool. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you already did. That's how they got the job. I don't know. All right. Just in case you didn't know, let me inform you. <laughs> but I'm a good guy. I'm cool. Just kind of work-minded fella. <laughs> just Johnny Responsible. That's me. Johnny Responsible. Hi, guys. Can you not get my ass gathered? Seeing since we had beautiful naked ladies running around the set for the first, I'd say, maybe four weeks of the show, we decided to make it really nice and do a women-female judging of the best butt. Now, you see, there's very many contestants up here. Many of them range from a little wide, a little small. We've got perfect round ones. we got a little uh, ones that have set. We've even got a naked one right here. Look, look at that. Naked butt. So there, there, there you go. There's our best set butt contest. We're going to announce the winner at 7 o'clock. We've got a couple prizes. And uh, we're real excited about it. <laughs> You won the butt contest yesterday? Oh, yeah, of course. I cheated, though. Huh? I promised everybody a free haircut for, if they bought it for me. Congratulations, Oh, thank you. Are you getting rid of my butt or not? <laughs> are you getting my butt? You know we are. I got my mom because you won the butt contest. I know, I announced it. No, I didn't. Who did you vote for? I voted for 33. Vote for One of the monster butts. Yeah. Because he was wearing a tight. It was really tight. You really saw you his ass. It was a very me. full rump. That's. You still won. But it's better. I was debating on voting for him. Uh huh. It looked very nice. Gotta be nice to. Ooh. Really out to the chair. Call me a dictator in a sense and and they said that uh you didn't call me a dictator they said the first thing that happens in a dictatorship implying that i'm a dictator is that they get rid of the police and they get rid of the unions the reason i'm here is because of the possibility of a strike what might happen and if we hopefully we won't have any problems but if we do we're gonna keep the peace they've got the whole union woody guthrie thing on their side where public opinion you know <laughs> switches to them and they say quinn's making two million dollars and this grip over here is saving money to buy a motorcycle all right you know who's wrong <laughs> okay well if you break it down to a sound bite i'm an asshole it's not a situation where they're targeting it because there's unrest and because people have been, you know, crew members have been calling up and saying we've been abused or we're not being paid well or anything like that. No, they are going after us. Well, basically, I mean, Quentin and Robert, um, Quentin and Lawrence have been, have had a lot of success being independents. And as a result, they're targeting them. And my theory for them targeting Robert is the fact that he's a one-man show. Um, he did mariachi all by himself, and then on top of that, in Desperado, which is, you know, the second part of Mariachi, he was the camerographer, he was the writer, he directed it, he was the steady cam operator, he was the editor, he was just, you know, a lot of things. He was able to still do, be creative, you know, and, and do the, the things about filmmaking that he loves, you know, every single part of it. And that's very hard for them to understand because they're used to having all those positions filled by different people. Part of the atmosphere that we create with our crew is that they are able to help each other out and there are no hardline jurisdictions between the different departments um, and everybody is helping everybody um, in a very cooperative way um, and 
the union tends to set down guidelines with regards to what responsibilities, hardline responsibilities between the different departments, and they, they, uh, it's just contrary to our philosophy of filmmaking. The union started off on a really bad foot with me personally. They came and struck my last movie, didn't even give me a chance to negotiate. I was very willing to, and they didn't allow me to do that. So um, they started a war with me, and it wasn't like they said, let's be friends, let's talk about negotiating. Basically, IOTC should be responding to the people as opposed to their own agenda of just grabbing everybody, all right? And if it were a situation where basically, look, we're not going to just make it a point to go after every, I'll, I'll say, start with 10 million and under show, which this show wouldn't apply because we're over 10 million, all right? That's fine, all right? Uh, if that were the case, it'd be fine. They wouldn't respond unless the people, unless the crew asked for them to respond, unless the conditions were bad. They're not going to make it a point to go on an attack. The Health and Welfare Department doesn't go and just take your kids in discriminately, all right? You know, they, you know, they hear that there's a problem first. Then they investigate the problem. Then they do what they do. We have to stand up to them because for, for the very reason that we have had some success and that we have had... Um, we're, we're higher profile than most independent filmmakers. We are what is making them angry. You know, they used to not target these films. And if they did target them, these films fizzled out. You know, we're not going to fizzle out. We're going to stand up to them. And we're going to try to stand up for every independent filmmaker out there. <laughs> Hi, Lyle Trackenberg, please. It's Ronnie Joy Glickman. With Hi, Lyle. This is Sarah Kelly calling, and um, we're here in Miami. Uh, I would very much appreciate a call back at 532. Hi, can I have Lyle Trackenberg? We are staying over at the Shawnee Beach Resort. This is again, uh, I'm with here with Sarah Kelly. Sarah Kelly calling again, and I'm with uh, Ronnie Joy Glickman. And we left him a note at the hotel. I would very much appreciate a call uh, back at 532331. We really would love to calling with Ronnie Joy Glickman, and we are still over at the Shawnee Beach Resort. Hi, can I have Lyle Trackenberg? We would actually love to have you call him. I have called every single day, and I've been in the office on three occasions, and no one has relayed anything to me. Sarah Kelly calling again, and I'm with He's in a meeting. And again, we're here because we want to get the IA's side. Talk to you soon, Lyle. Bye. I wish I knew what Lyle looked like. Excuse me? Lyle Trachtenberg. Um, let me see if he's inside, OK? okay. Until. Sir, we just want to talk to Lyle Trachtenberg. Like I said, we should. We're just, we're just waiting to speak to Lyle Trachtenberg. Hey, we're going to get booted. I've got my buddy Chase looking for him in another room. Thank you. Filming me saying that. Oh, anyway, he's not here right now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Upstairs, right? We're looking for Lyle Trachtenberg. Have you seen him? Well, no. We're making. As a matter of fact, he's probably down the hall here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. Do you know where we could find Lyle Trachtenberg? Jeez, I haven't seen him around. If you hang out, I'll see if I can find him. Okay. Who are you, folks? We're with the documentary crew. He knows us, and uh, we're just looking for him. Well, I'll see if I can find him. Thank you. They're what? We're supposed to escort them out of the building. Have a seat, group. Thank you. Yes, sir. For whom? Sir, we're just looking for Lyle Trachtenberg. I'm sorry, but I'm going to reopen. Th this is all part of the IEA, and unless you've invited up, we have to ask you to leave. We're just trying to find Lyle Trachtenberg. Hi. With Lyle your Trachtenberg. Lyle, we're on a joy glitch. First of all, you shouldn't be up here. That's what I try to do. Yeah. 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 
So You've I... been told how this thing could be done, so, you know. We actually, actually we have haven't, Lyle, we've been trying we've to been, talk to you uh, about it, fighting for an opportunity to sit down with you and talk about this. Well, if you lock everything up, I'll be glad to take both of you aside and, and tell you will, what the situation is. We'll be happy is. to do that. Okay, so turn on everything. You two come in and I'll talk to you. Okay, okay. so Thank cut. You. My experience was awful. We uh, were, A, well, A, they just didn't return phone calls. I mean, over and over and over, they just would not return phone calls. Quentin, Lawrence Bender, Miramax, nobody wanted to talk to us about this thing. And I don't know why. I mean, all we wanted to get was their side of it, you know, put them on the record. And uh, they just, uh, maybe they wanted to talk to us, but they certainly never showed it by returning a phone call. And I called them you know, half a dozen times each. The issues in play here were not necessarily economic. They had more to do with uh, just, again, bad negotiating tactics, bad uh, 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 communication skills, uh, drawing sand lines in the sand and seeing each other as opponents rather than setting the rhetoric aside and finding actually the common ground. Because if you listen to each party of the union and producer two parties uh, discuss it separately, uh, they're really very close. I think health insurance is probably the best thing right now about the IA, that and that they protect you as far as your overtime and stuff like that. If I think, in my opinion, if uh, independents would uh, make sure that they didn't screw anybody over, didn't work you to death, and, and if they did, they paid you, and uh, if they supplied you with health insurance, who knows what would happen. It's gonna work. Stick around. We'll see you later. <laughs> no, we weren't supposed to burn the facade now. <laughs> said burn <laughs> it has a brand new look and it looks very good I have to say it I think we are just going to rebuild parts of it but um, we don't have to rebuild at all and uh, I have no idea my crew is pretty tired <laughs> we've been here for five weeks and um, it's too hot it's 122 um, the winds are hard. Emotionally, I'm okay. You know, it's nothing that I can do more than to continue working. <laughs> Let's just spot paint black the foam so we can get in here and start our reverse. Right. Finish all that stuff up. Looks fucking great. Yeah. 
great. I'm sorry it burned down, but it looks cool. We knew there was a chance of it catching fire. As a matter of fact, we knew there would be fire. We just didn't think there would be this much fire. Uh, that happens, you know. Uh, sometimes the magic works perfectly, and sometimes it doesn't work perfectly. We'll do the ending of the movie with right. him and Juliet. We'll go into the motorhome, and then we'll do. I mean, our day is still the same. Yeah, the same. We just don't do tonight. We just don't do Cheech. And then tomorrow we'll go do the gravy train, okay. and that'll give him a week to fix this, and then we'll come back and do all the Harvey and Cheech stuff. That's all I was thinking about was you guys. No. Oh. Isn't that like your baby? Yeah. Yes, it <laughs> is. <What's happening? laughs> I know. <laughs> I know it is. It's like a baby. Okay, guys, so once we're safe, guys, once we're safe, we're on a new deal. We're out by the vehicles. We're on the reverse of George. We're on the reverse of George from yesterday. So we need to get into the gravy train tomorrow. Sure. So that we have to hustle on that, no whatever problem. we need to do. Okay? Yeah. Gravy so we'll have some time to fix this. What we need to do now is for the shots that we need to finish up, uh -huh. okay, we're gonna play it like this as okay. the ending of the movie. See the spots, see the the spots of the foam? Yes. We need to just get up there and paint all that black. Okay. Let's do that now, okay. and then we can get our shots going, and we'll sure. kill rock and roll, and our day is still the same. Okay. Only thing changes is the gravy my, train tomorrow, okay? My, some of my guys, some of the guys have construction Yeah, just, here. just be concerned with all the foam, so we can okay. just get it all black so it looks charred. All black. Yeah, okay. okay, great. Hollywood. <laughs> you gotta fucking love it. I wish we were doing the movie Twister. Hey guys, as soon as this blows over, guys, we'll go. <laughs> guys, heads up. Guys, we got dust coming in, guys. Heads up. Now you're okay? Yeah. So let's say we got a four o'clock leave. We got out here by four thirty. Okay, we're we'll shooting. Setting up. Shooting, shooting at five. Say five thirty. Five thirty. We're shooting at five thirty. The actors ready. Sun is up at five. Yeah. So apparently. we're not gonna. We won't be shooting until five. Five thirty. I mean, just because the sun is up doesn't mean we have enough light to actually shoot. Right. And they say um, there's possibility of rain, which would be very ugly, because this would get like mud and nobody could move. The other bad uh, possibility, which is a long shot, but it happens. They say as it goes around, circles around, and comes back through the other direction. So. We'll see what happens, but hopefully we'll be shooting soon. We're shooting at 5.30. It's going to take us, say, five hours to get the shot, get the scene. That's 10.30. We get to the next location. It's 11.30 to get to the next location. Right. Lunch. And or box it in. We box it in. About. We've gotten here. What, what time was crew call? I was sleeping in the honey wagon over there, and uh, I woke up, and I couldn't see anybody. So I went back to sleep. Well, Leaving at 4.30. 4 so six hours is 10.30, so we've been, okay, so we've gone past lunch an hour. Right. They've eaten on the bus. So then we got eight hours past 11.30. Did you notice the bathroom from the motorhome blew over? No way. Yeah, I gotta go check and see if there's anyone under there. 11.30 plus an hour rehearsal and lighting. It's 12.31. So you're, you're only looking at like 9 o'clock. I mean, I'm saying only, but it's better than 11 o'clock. I think people, I, I mean, I don't know, I'm speaking personally. I would rather get up in the morning and get home at 9 than get to sleep in. But I don't know, people, you know, you're going to get mixed reactions if you take a poll about it. Yeah. We're going to wrap out tonight. Come in early tomorrow morning. Because uh, it's going to kill us. We are lucky yesterday, but we'll get this every day. So we'll wrap out and start shooting early.
I could cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I yeah. just don't. It gets claustrophobic. Quinn <laughs> give a shit. <laughs> I do. I, I, it gets kind of oppressive. I, when you have this going on all fucking night, you know, it gets kind of rough. You know, uh, it's one of the toils of fame. Bye, Juliet. Bye, Juliet. <laughs> Wondering what is it that uh, inspires people to hang out here in the desert? George Clooney. Quentin yeah, Tarantino. George Clooney. Yeah. So what would you do with videos like this? Where would they go? Hard copy, right there, inside edition. 
How does that work legally? I'm really sincerely asking you out of curiosity. You don't have releases for stuff like that. Uh, we, don't need the, we don't need releases. There's a three rule, three person rule permit that uh, exempts us from having to have a permit or any type of release. Because we're a nuisance. Pardon? Three person rule, so you have a If you have a crew of three people or less. Oh, that's then, interesting. Yeah. So you guys are just going to hang out here all day and try to get photographed? Yeah. I'm going to try. <laughs> Come on! You're kidding me, right? The privacy shit, but you're jamming these guys. That's yeah. too much. Well, when you guys leave That's us alone, much. I'll let them shoot the hell out of my trunk, all right? <laughs> now, ER hunk George Clooney. On TV, he plays a clean-cut doctor. But we caught up with George backstage on the set of a new movie, and this time he's playing it down and dirty. Jody Baskerville has tonight's Hollywood Exposed. Oh, really mature, George Clooney. The television star seems to be gushing over his crossover to feature films. As this exclusive video shows, the ER heartthrob is fooling around on the set of his first movie, From Dusk to Dawn. George is leaving nice guy Dr. Ross back in the emergency room and heading out to play the tattooed heavy in a movie scripted by blood and guts maestro Quentin Tarantino. All right, let's go, guys. Let's go. They put it in the uh, alcove. Let's go. Alcove. Yeah. 22 frames. You got it, bro. Uh, 20 frames. 20 frames. 20 frames. 20 frames. 20 frames. I'll give you a little help there. Shoot you at 20. So move slow again? Um, yeah, you move it there. No more. So this is up, in. I'm using it from when you turn over like that. Right. So, Mark? So, pull in, it's gonna be reverse, long. elbow up, look back, pull into there, get out of the car. Should I not shut it off in case this car doesn't want to start up again? Don't shut it off, yeah, don't, don't get out. Don't get out? Okay. Let's shoot it, gentlemen. Here we go, guys, here we go. Lock up that corner. just driving up? Yeah, it's um, right after you finished talking, and he said, uh, you asked about the burgers, actually. Oh, okay. Stand by. Oh, so we're not getting out of the car or anything, it's just the car pulling up? Let's go, guys, run, let's go. And here we go. Roll camera. Roll Action car. Do they have an uh, X-rated channel? No. Do they have a water bed? Nope. What do they got? They have four walls and a roof, and that's all we need. All right, pop the trunk. Let's do this fast. Okay, it's like we 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 op we open it. We open up the trunk, and he says, "Don't you know?" He goes, "Don't say a word." And then to me, open the door. Don't say a word. <gasps> talking the other day and I uh, said that um, somehow now on this film it seems as if I've come to understand the technique in a way that I had always heard it promised to be which is it's just there as a tool for the actor to arrive at some place and that place is mysterious um, there is no formula for acting. There is a technique to open the doors for the actor to enter some place. But in that place, it's up to you, it's up to me to find our way and to allow all of our humanity in. It seems somehow um, during Dust Till Dawn that's happened for me. 
I felt like I've done the most moments moment work that I've done on the film so far. And then you were saying that you felt the same way about your performance. And yeah. Events. Could well, you describe what what what, which, uh, which, uh, what you mean when you when we say moment by moment? Well, I, I, I want to say by the way, this is not particularly related to Dust Till Dawn. This is related to our work as actors. From the moment we became interested in acting, uh, from the moment we decided to become storytellers, to get involved in telling stories, which is what our work is really about. Um, by moment to moment, I mean what's going on right now between me, you, and the, uh, the viewers. We're not sure exactly what we're going to do next. We're not sure what our next thought's going to be. I do know I'm doing the interview. You know, I'm talking to you, there's a camera on me, there are people watching. But in between all of that, there's my existence. And it's that existence and the acceptance of that existence, that mystery, that we call moment to moment on the stage, where you do not know what's going to happen in the next moment, what your thought is going to be, whether it'll be about God, your, your mother, your daughter, what you have for breakfast, who you are in this universe, the whole mystery of being here. How did that get to be here? <laughs> I have been miserable. It's been 120 degrees. I, I, I don't do well in the, in the heat at all, at all. It's just, it's hot. I'm cranky it's just it's dry my skin it's just absolutely dry it's a horrible yeah, what a day. <laughs> i think i'm going on 17. i am so tired and so mean right now are the booms in the shot I think we worked 18 hours today, from 5 o'clock in the morning, you know, until, what, 11 o'clock tonight? And it's Sunday, it's six day, it's time and a half, what more do you want to know? We're cranky, bad food, I kind of feel like, well, it's just not our fault, so why are we being <laughs> We got a piece of chicken and two pieces of bread and a melted brownie, what do you want to know? That's not cool. Here we go. And then, and we got left. The bus left without us. We're walking to the bus. Here's the camera crew. Whoosh. We started today at 5 in the morning. It's now 10.30 at night, and we're still on the bus. And I'm still working on my computer on time cards to make sure that we're getting five meal penalties plus 50 bucks non-taxable cash. Um, because we got, for lunch, we got plastic fucking trays with aluminum foil and rice and yucky corn and dry sandwiches with chicken and it was <laughs> and, um, and what did you get for dinner? And for dinner I got nothing. I didn't even get my peanut butter and jelly sandwich that I requested um, the guys make. I tried to get them to make me a cheese sandwich and the people at the diner said they would not make me a cheese sandwich because I'm a vegetarian and that the only options were halibut, roast beef, and chicken and since I didn't take any of those production wouldn't pay for the cheese sandwich. And, uh, but besides that, I love the movie. And what are you going to do tonight to relax? I'm going to swim and I'm going to drink heavily. <laughs> and, um. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to fuck off. Seattle. I haven't been there in years. I'm sure it's a nice town. But I got it because of the front of the shirt. I know. <laughs> How many hours did you put in today? 17. It was 17, I think, is what we counted. 17 hours today. And it was the sixth day of the week, which made it feel like about 28 hours. But, <laughs> but now I think I have to go wash myself in the pool. I talked to them and everything. There was like, there's a lot of people in particularly around this area here they have nothing to do with us and stuff and they're calling and they're 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 complaining and stuff all right i said look we're a film crew 
and we need to get together and socialize and blow off steam, and particularly when we've been working since 7 in the morning to 10.30 at night and everything. But we'll compromise. We'll meet you halfway. Put away the instruments, put away the music, and just keep it at, a, at, a, at just a normal level of conversation. We've got no problem with these guys. They're going to be totally cool. Right, you want to sing more try just as an encore, and then we'll just cut it off? Then that's it, then that's it. Turn 21 in prison, do it live without parole. No one to see me ride, but mama tried. Mama tried, mama tried, to make me better. But a bleeding as I deny that this is only me to blame, but mama tried. I love you too. Uh huh. What? I know you want a dog when I get off the show. Henry wants a turtle, okay. Earl, the hookers are here. Uh oh. Little Earl, the hookers are here. I'm just joking. Let me talk to your mama. Okay. Hey, mama. I miss you. What do you mean, no, I don't? I'm having a great time. I have this beautiful suite that I share with four other drivers. Uh, <laughs> I like the fact that uh, within a radius of about maybe 150 feet, there's usually at least four different rooms that are stocked to the gills with beer. Um, only about maybe one out of four times do I have to pay for it. Um, and let's see. Uh, and I like going out to some place I would never go in a million years for any reason, ever, like the Dry Lake Bed. <laughs> to say that I was on one of the hottest places on the planet in one particular day of my life. And then and then to come home and, and get sloppy drunk by the pool. That's what I like about location. Pretty much what I like about uh, being on location is uh, all the people we get to work with, a lot of great people you get to meet. I work with the greatest transportation crew yeah, that's true. In, uh, in the business. Uh -huh. And uh, like Don says, there's beer everywhere you go. <laughs> <laughs> when I come home from a hard day, it's the beer that I really, I really, I really look forward to. Getting sloppy drunk by the pool and falling in. Rumors are that the team is going to come down with a big show of force tomorrow. And embarrass us, I believe, was the word. Exactly. I just, I'm getting really sick of this. And, uh, and there's all this grumbling, the union's grumbling again. The, the strike, the union, hello, we've got how many days left in the show and we're still talking about it? You know, if the union was, I mean, these are big words, but the union was really out to look after these people, I would really think that they would have stepped forward and been a lot more upfront with the whole show at an earlier date. You know, we have what, over 10 days of shooting left. You know. I was, and I don't know if I've mentioned this before, I was brought up, I was brought up a big union child. You know, my father fought hard for the unions. And within what industry? Within the Screen Actors Guild, SAG, AFTRA, there's, he belongs to like three or four unions. He still does. And, for him, you know, I mean, he's 79 years old and they're supporting him. They, he's like got a great retirement and, you know, but he fed into this machine and he fought hard for it because he was a little man. You know, he was a little man that was being su suppressed as what the, what the unions were about when they came forward, in my eyes, were about that. We're about protecting the man against the oppressors. And in my, and in my journey and where I'm at now and where I, what I want to do, I'm really scratching my head because I'm being told what I can and can't do by the unions, you know, and I don't know who the oppressor is anymore. How serious are you taking the officers Well, we're taking it really serious. We're making sure we have replacements and, <coughs> you know, I was supposed to go to New York this morning for market research screening. I didn't go. All right, here we go. And, you know, I'm just kind of sick of it, to be quite honest. A lot of wasted energy, yeah. as usual, you know. You know, you just have to take right. it that way and yeah. Here we go. take a shot here. Yeah. And we're rolling camera. We're rolling. And stand by. Action car, action car, action car.
acquaintance called somebody that, that knew me and said he wanted to meet me. Uh, that uh, he wanted me to read scripts, and scripts. He hadn't done any, he begun yet making pictures. He had made a picture. So I met with him, shot a couple of games of pool and chatted with him and encouraged him to keep writing. And then I disappeared into the mountains because I was at liberty. And uh, most of the time I'm at liberty. Hi, Heidi. <laughs> and then I turned around and there he was, Quentin Tarantino, all over the place. Called me and asked if I wanted to work in this. I said I'd be glad to, that I would do radio if I had a chance. That's a joke, you know. <laughs> I guess you heard about that shit up in Abilene, bank robbery. And Saul's been on the box all day. It killed some people, didn't it? Yeah. Killed four Rangers, three cops. One civilian took a lady bank teller hostage with him. Supposed to be headed for the border, which would bring him right my way. I get my hands on him crazy, sick fucking bastards payback time. I mean, I'll we'll get him. We'll get him. You even told me that you had written it. It was always supposed to be in that Michael Parks kind of delivery. So a lot of pauses and a lot of thinking. And it sounds cool. Yeah, it's just it's like a different sound for the movie. Yeah, it's like from everyone else's lines are like da 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 da, you know. But like I wrote it for Michael Parks, and I knew he how he, you know, how he does it. So I wrote it in his rhythm. So it's like yeah, yeah they kill some rangers and uh, took a bank teller hostage. And, we get him. We're talking payback time. We get him. It's in. We get him. <laughs> what would you say is your personal favorite part about the filmmaking process? Probably. But your curiosity about other people, the investigation of other people. Makes you think more of other people. Of course, I go that way. I, I go the way Jean Renoir went. I don't go the way the most actors, I don't believe most actors are rather self indulgent. And it's my character and my process and my motivation and blah, 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 blah. But it's really finding out about other people when you, when you act. I mean, unless you're Cary Grant, you know. I love Cary Grant, by the way, Monty Cliff. Wonderful personality actor. But if you if you enjoy character work, which I do, it, you have to consider the humanity a lot more than you do most other most other work. Unless you're a writer, and, which is the hardest. The guy never crossed the bear, just taking care of that potato head. Nah, uh, he didn't say anything. Like he goes, yeah, never crossed the bear, just okay. taking care of that potato head. <laughs> <laughs> it was me, Quentin, and uh, Cindy Crawford in this in this big waterbed, and I said to her, you know, what? we can't do that. I can't you know, believe it. That's it. wild, uh, man. But, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you guys. Come on, guys. Get conversations outside. I need you, George Clooney. Doug is a specialist in tough love. <laughs> <laughs> Tap it out. Here we go. Where? He's tough love extraordinaire. <laughs> He's the Casanova of tough love. They were dicking around this whole time. I just found out he just got the wardrobe in his room. Go hurt somebody. I just talked to them. <laughs> he yells because he cares. <laughs> you walk out the door, okay? After the shot is over, once we have cut, everybody needs to walk out. There will be a lot of smoke in here probably, okay? So just walk orderly out the door. Again, Dieter will be right at the door, okay? So don't linger in here, guys. As soon as we cut, head out, please. Just walk out. Let us clear it out. This is not a question and answer session, sir. This is me telling you. 
most of you have been through this before, um, but especially the uh, paramedic type guys. Um, we love having you here. Uh, we kind of have our own ritual. Um, he'll go through his whole sequence. We'll put him out. If he has a problem, we will call you in and, and get on him. Um, usually it goes real quick and there's no problems. Um, and, and once again, people, you know, we don't need people rushing in or anything. Um, of course, you've all seen this before, so you know the ritual. Uh, let's be safe. And Charlie? Um, same thing for us. We'll, we'll take care of any fires if, if for any reason we think that we're losing this. We'll just yell back to Doug for everyone to walk out quietly and calmly out that door. Hopefully it should go fine. There'll probably be quite a bit of smoke. This is probably going to be a little bigger than what we saw last time on, on a body burn. Yes. Right? Yes, oh, yeah. this will probably be the most fire by quite a bit, to tell you the truth. Um, this will definitely be big flame. Roll camera! One! Fuck! Two! <laughs> It's just yeah. toxic, you know, it's like, that's yeah. Can you go again? It's like, huh? Can you go again? Yeah. Go on. So today we got some really good news. And Miramax has approved it. And we have health care benefits for everybody on the crew, Transpo, every, every, every uh, department. Anybody who's worked on the show from 10 days up to 20 days, we're going to offer, we're going to give uh, three months of, of health care. Um, and from 20 days to 30 days, it'll be six months. And anybody who works over 30 days will get a full year of health care. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. There's, there are a couple different options. A couple options. different options. We'll we, go over it. Everyone wants to get out of here. So we'll go through it with you. But we want to have it all done and signed up before the shoot is finished. So that Great was our job. goal. And we did it. Great yeah. job. Thank you. I definitely plan on making movies with the unions, you know, and maybe again without them, depending on how my relationship goes with them in the future. So what I don't want to do, even though I'm willing to fight them, is to send an anti-union message, actually, necessarily. Because I think that if there's a way that we can work something out, I would like to do that. You know, and um, it'll be up to both of us, I think. And not just me personally, but the distributors, the other producers, and the different locals and the, and the international members as to whether or not we can come up with something that benefits independent filmmakers. I think, <coughs> I think the unions are a little behind the times, in a sense. I think the people who are the, running the unions and the people, the international and the locals, are a little old-fashioned, a little in terms of the way they think. And, you know, now there's a whole new breed of filmmakers out there. They're making movies a whole different kind of a way, a whole new way of, you know, Robert edits and does his steady cam and does handheld himself. Um, I mean, there's, a, there's so many different things that we do differently. Um, and so they need to learn to change. And it's a big organization, and that takes, that doesn't happen overnight. And I don't want to make it my cause, a celeb, whatever, to have to go out and try to do that. I want to just make movies, but because I'm making movies and I've become high profile, I guess. I'm going to have to take some responsibility and help them to have to change that somewhat. We seldom has heard a discouraging word 
It's a great line. Where seldom is heard a discouraging word. And the skies are not cloudy all day. Disasters, sand, fire, rain, unions. Unions. <laughs> and unions, what else? And Napoleon was the snow. And Napoleon was the snow, exactly. <laughs> and we had Quinn and George. And we had Quinn and George. Two total natural disasters. I think we're waiting for the frogs to hit. Yeah. We're waiting, we're waiting for the sun to pop out behind the rain clouds. So you can tell us if it is in fact raining right now? It's drizzling. It's on its way out. This too shall pass. Any minute this film will be over. And then people will know. We already got the shot. This is all just bonus shit. <laughs> and we're about to blow up Benny's world of liquor. As you can tell, we're chanting the clouds away. Right now we're in a major holding pattern due to the fact that the clouds have come in and the sun no longer matches what we previously shot. So right now, this is what's known as, well, some people call it holding patterns, some people call it spanking. We're, we're holding right now, all right? And this shot would be? This would be the explosion of Benny's World of Liquor, and this will be the picture martini. What did I tell you? What did I say to you? I said, buy the roadmap and leave. What the fuck am I supposed to do, Seth? You don't recognize this. You don't recognize shit. Seth, I'm telling you, the way he looked at us, you especially, I knew he knew. Low profile. You understand the meaning of the words low profile? Hey, Richie, how's your hand? It hurts like a fucking son Let me tell you what low profile is not. It is not. Take it to the hostage. No, no. Don't you think the interviewer should come into the jacuzzi to interview? I think most definitely. It couldn't definitely, hurt a bit. Yeah. Well, in 2020, they do that, don't they? They get the message, of course. So, come on, sir. Well, well, all right, then we just won't say anything anymore. There you go. Silence. Very silent. There you all go. Right. A true reporter. <laughs> scalded. That's right. There's, there's, not, there's, there's no scalding. There's no risk in over hot water. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta say, you will undoubtedly be disappointed by the temperature. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so here we are. Hello, Not boys. to worry. Not to worry. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay, let's just go around and just say why you work in this business. No, we'll cut it. Oh, we already, oh, I already did mine. I want to be filthy rich and be in the union. So I, won't have to, so I don't have to do non-union pictures anymore without getting fully compensated for my tortures. Hey, spell there it out. Go. Does it seem warm on your own? U-N-I-O-N, baby. Ooh, ooh. Union. I love famous people. <laughs> I love them. I like, to watch, I like to watch them eat. Any, anything, anything like that, I love them. Andy Watts, star fucker. Yeah, I'd be a stalker if I didn't, if I actually wasn't paid to watch them. <laughs> articulation of life, studying life, and it's by those last hands, that moment, that one thousandth of a second as the shutter clicks, as everything's immortalized, and I get a real rush out of that, knowing that I could do like that, or that. 14 on my list. It's just documenting history, and a history that doesn't exist, and we're, we're all making it up, and it's life, and I love it. Uh, it's one of the conditions of my probation. I don't know. Why do I work in the film business? Hi, JT. How are you, sweetheart? 
That's why I work in the phone business. So I don't have to have a real job. So I can work with a lot of people who don't want to have real jobs. You're doing what you want. Getting paid all that money and you get free meals and they pay for a hotel. You don't find that in any other business. Anyone that complains, I've never understood it. Oh, we're gonna have chicken again today? Really? The filet mignon and lobster you have every night? You know? Because of the craziness, the zaniness. I don't wanna, I don't wanna work nine to five. So I'd rather work from four to, uh, four to one. <laughs> four to four. When I was a kid, you know, I, was, I had a little black and white TV up in my room, and I would stay up really late watching movies, just watching movies. And for me, all my life, you know, it's been movies were, you know, my favorite, you know, art form. And so for me now to be able to have the chance to make those movies so that some other kid can be staying up all night in his room watching TV and watching old movies, you know, and the movies that I worked on, to try and keep that going. Movies are just such a part of American life right now to have a say in that and to be able to work on those, I think, is, you know, a privilege. It's a damn good time, man. Living, loving, working, sweating, grinding, hugging, kissing. It's all, it's all good. It's art. Fun. It's all come together. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if I could have your attention, please. Guys, thank you all very much for one hellacious job. That is a picture wrap on From Dusk Till Dawn. <laughs> Come <laughs> on. 